spectacularly short, less than 1,000 foot takeoff wow. roll for a 32,000 pound airplane. They say they, these may be some of the most amazing moments of flying you will ever see. Oh, Marat, uh, Marat Alikoff, when I met him last year, he was 30, so he must be 31 years old now, very clever. 31 years old <laughs> doing the demonstration today, right up on his back into a loop and down the backside. He went over across the top there at 3,000 feet above the ground. Wow. Kind of a, he did one loop of a cloverleaf for you military pilots out there, one loop of a cloverleaf, and he's now going directly away from the crowd. And this should be the tail slide. So he pulls now, the airplane up. Now, we don't up. do this, correct? No. Only them. Uh, well, right up into the cloud now. So, But we he should them. probably come out of that cloud when tail we see first. Him. Well, you can be on us. I know we're looking up. <laughs> but he can't see him, As soon folks. as we see it, Right back it. there he comes, right He's back. He's out of the clouds. So what he did is oh, he went up, he ladies and gentlemen, ran out of airspeed. The airplane actually does a little bit of a tail slide and goes the other way. Why don't we do this? Well, the military utility of such a thing is, you know, as they said in Top Gun, I feel a need for, for speed. speed. Yes, indeed. Uh, a little more uh, common way of saying is speed is life. Okay. Why do I want to slow down so the other guy can shoot a sitting duck? I mean, so all it really does is it shows the maneuverability, and it, it, it does show a little bit of the uh, reliability of the engines. You know, these things are, I won't say clunky, but they're functional. I mean, clunky is not a, not a fair word. The afterburner generally on on this? Well, yeah, when I flew the airplane, it was either full afterburner or full idle. But now now he is going very slowly right now. He, he is showing now. As we use in our airplanes now uh, digital flight controls, this airplane has got a hydromechanical flight control system, something that we got out of the business of, you know, 20, 25 years ago. But again, they're building a functional airplane, not necessarily a, uh, a user-friendly airplane in terms of uh, you know, the most sophisticated G whiz bay. And it showed good handling, good stability there at about 120 miles an hour. Yeah, straight hydraulic system, you're saying, just straight hydraulics. Straight hydraulics with, uh, in fact, it's even got pneumatic brakes. Wow. Is this thing as computerized as some of the American jets we've seen here today? Not at all. In fact, very, very little uh, computer application to this particular airplane. There are later variants of the MiG-29 where they are starting to put in things, as we call them, glass cockpits, uh, television tubes for the displays, where they're putting in a digital flight control system. But this one is a straight hydromechanical flight control system. Okay, now he's going to go straight up. Up over on his back here, I just, oh, a beautiful thing. He's just going to kind of do a square loop up around the cloud. We'll see him come out the other side of the cloud, flat on his there back. There he is. And now straight down for just a few seconds, and then pulling out about 500 feet above the ground. You know, depending upon how you look at it, it kind of looks like an 18, it could look like a 16, a 14, just depending upon the way you look at it. You're absolutely right, uh, Connie. Is, uh, some people would say they borrow a cup of sugar from every house on the block. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, got an F, it's got elements of all those airplanes in its design. Okay, now we're coming down the flight line about 300 miles an hour, a nice little slow roll. The airplane can actually roll much faster, about 720 degrees per second. That's twice over per second at full aileron run. And, and it has a fast landing approach too, doesn't it? Yeah, a fast landing approach. You know what I'm, you know what I'm hearing you point. say though is that uh, between between you and Connie, what I'm what I'm hearing is that some of the technology on this MiG-29 uh, is outmoded. Except we still seem as a nation as a defense system to be impressed by it. Why is that? <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, we aren't as impressed now as we were before the East Germans gave us 80 to 90 of them <laughs> a year ago. <laughs> we were building an airplane and still are building an airplane called the Advanced Tactical Fighter. Here's something thing again we don't very often see jet airplanes do. It's outside, he's upside down, pushing forward on a stick, the negative G thing. So going straight up now, he's pushing to the outside. That's high enough, pull back on the stick now. Lost around, in the clouds. Around that beautiful piece of cloud as the seagull flies between us and the... Uh, yes, jet. he's out. Where is it? There and he here is. he comes right back down out of the sun. We actually found out that the airplane wasn't as formidable or mm. as capable as we might have thought. And you get down to another thing, too, to where we're finding out that training is so much more important. The Iraqis had this airplane. Oh and did not use it to a, even the capability that an American Well, these are, these are the planes that the Iraqis took over to Iran. Absolutely. These and the French Mirage F-1s, because they didn't want to lose them. 
And if you've ever bought the top of the line of anything, folks, you've ever wanted the top of the line car, you name it, to the Soviets, this is their top of the line. This is, this is good stuff. <laughs> Now, we, we see he's flying a show about 500 feet in the air, so the crowd can get a good eyeball on him. And we see turning rates and, and acceleration comparable to what we see in an F-16 or an F-18. You know, is it is it safe to assume that if the Soviets are allowing us to see this plane and knowing that we have 90 of them from the East Germans, that this is not the best in their bag anymore either? Uh, that That's a safe bet because, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm well aware of some upgrades to this airplane where they start using computers in terms of the flight controls. There is, is the uh, the Cobra maneuver. He comes in about 300 knots, pulls back on the stick. There's a mechanical stop. He looked like he stalled. He did. You pull back even further, and you hear a metallic clank in the cockpit, literally, as you go through a mechanical stop. Oh. No no digital flight control system there. Oh. That's and stopped then, your heart. And then we go back to Mother Nature. The lawn dart's got all the weight out in front. You let go, shove the stick forward. Full afterburner and away you go. You remember this, Tommy? Three Clevelanders here paid ten thousand dollars a piece <laughs> to go up in one of these for a twenty-minute ride. You're getting to see this, ladies and gentlemen, for free. But think, people paid ten thousand bucks a piece because they thought it was so exciting. Yeah. And again, you know, the Russians aren't here necessarily to get us to buy MiG-29s or MiG-31s or anything else. What it is is, first off, it's a goodwill tour, and secondly, they're telling us, hey, we have an aerospace ability. We have things. We'd like to do some joint ventures. In fact, there is uh, the Sukhoi Design Bureau, much like the McCoyan Design Bureau, and a company down in Georgia called uh, Gulfstream who are jointly designing a supersonic business jet. No. So uh, this, this wow. is one of those things, you know, the Glasnost is, is coming alive. It sure and, is. And so they brought a military airplane here. It is not necessarily to say, hey, buy this thing or necessarily compare this to your F-16, your F-8. Mm -hmm. A knife edge pass. It doesn't have any uh, any lift off the wings there. A lot of fun. I get the impression that the USSR is trying to make a statement uh, during its own tough times at home to the marketplace worldwide, specifically here in America, that, hey, look, we do know something about avionics. Let us let us be a part of tomorrow. And, and we are interested in doing business with you. They, they, I think they recognize, too, that, you know, aid isn't going to get them out of their present situation. Absolutely they not. need to do that for themselves. Perhaps we can provide the catalyst. Perhaps we can put the seed corn in the ground. But they've got to grow it, and there's got to be some technology transfer. There's got to be some cooperative efforts that are going to make the economy stabilize so that the independent nation states and they mm -hmm. call it the soviet mig-29 friendship tour of 91 a reflection on how much the relations between east and west have improved and Indeed. as i saw the news on channel three last night yeah. they were out at nasa lewis yesterday there are about oh, 30 yeah. people in this delegation and they're doing more than just coming down here town here to the show they are in fact uh, taking an opportunity and as i said uh, they're going other places, they're doing other air shows, and we're gonna have a dinner for the North American MiG Pilots Association over in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in a couple of weeks. That's three of us with Valer Manitsky, who is our chapter president, the only chapter. And here is the MiG-29A as it touches down. The chute is out the back. You can clearly see the red star on the uh, fan tail, I guess that's what you call it, of the, uh, the MiG-29A. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the star of the Cleveland National Air Show. We'll be back right after this.